Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in this course, Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions. Today, we are going to start the last module of this course, that is module 8, Combustion and Flames. In this module, on an average, 5 lectures are planned. The first two lectures we will be discussing about laminar premixed flame. It will be followed by a laminar diffusion flame. Then we will enter into the fundamental aspects of uh, droplet evaporations and turbulent flame. And the last we will try to see the engine combustions and pollutions. And in fact, this particular lecture will be fully dedicated to the actual phenomena that happens in the engines and due to the combustions in the engines and the combustions uh, products that comes out to the exhaust how it reacts with atmospheric air and that leads to the pollution. Uh, so, this is overall uh, picture of this module. So, let us start the first lecture laminar P mixed flame part 1. So, in this lecture that is lecture number 28 laminar premixed flame, we will cover the topics such as modes of combustion, physical features of a laminar flame, the factors that influences the laminar velocity uh, and flame speed correlations. So, typically when you talk about flame, it is this flame speed that essentially decides how the reaction should proceed. If the flame extinguishes means that it is not a self sustained flame. So, in order to achieve a self sustained flame, we need to have a desired flame velocity. So, in a laminar pre mixed flame, the flame velocity plays a critical role and of course, the uh, temperatures, pressures, equivalence ratio they have all have uh, um, adequate roles in um, that influences the flame velocities. So, we will discuss them one by one. So, let me start the first I mean to introduce the flame. Let us uh, go back to very basics of combustion which we started much earlier in our previous lectures. Uh, one point of time we discussed the modes of combustion and uh, to some extent we all know that combustion phenomena takes place in spark ignition engines and compression ignition engines. So, in a spark ignition engines the fuel and air they mix. Uh, before the charge enters into the engines. So, it is a pre mixed combustion and in a uh, compression ignition in the engine the fuels and fuel and air they are separate entities and they mix as and when they meet or admit at the some interface in the combustion chamber. So, this is the very basic difference that makes the, the uh, nature of the flame. So, the combustion can occur in two types of modes, one is flame mode, other is non flame mode. Typically in SI and CI engines they are flame mode. So, the flame mode is further categorized as pre mixed or non pre mixed. Non pre mixed flames are known as diffusion flame. So, uh, mainly in SI engines the, uh, the combustion is initiated through pre mixed flame. And typically, a mixed as well as non mixed diffusion flames are part of CI engines. We will discuss about that. And uh, if you broadly look at the flame and non flame mode combustions, they are detected by knocking phenomena. For example, if you take an instant that in a pre mixed combustion in SI engines, there is a thin zone of intense uh, uh, chemical reactions that seem to be propagated in the unburnt air fuel mixtures. So, if you look at this particular figure in a flame mode of combustion in SI engines there is a propagating flame and we in the, when the flame 
propagates that means it is already uh, reacts rea reactants and oxidizers they uh, already have reacted and it has created as the flame propagates in from left to right the reactants uh, and products they mix together and they form burnt gases whereas in the other side of the flame the we have unburnt fuel air mixtures but still and slowly they gets reacted as and when the flame uh, enters into their zone. Now, similarly, in a CI engines, when the flame moves, there is a region where auto ignition takes place for the fuel and air mixtures. That is mainly because the fuel and air they are considered as a separate entity and they come and mix locally at one particular uh, positions in the engine cylinders. So, that is the basic difference moving further uh, with respect to uh, knocking. So, knocking is a very common phenomenon that leads to the sudden rise in the pressure in the engine cylinder due to the chemical reactions. And in fact, we all know that this knocking is undesirable in diesel engines, but we cannot avoid this knocking in compression ignition engines because the auto ignition itself creates sudden rise in the pressure in the engine cylinders. So, uh, with this viewpoint, uh, if you take two classes of flames, one is pre-mixed flame, where fuel and oil, fuel and oxidizer they are mixed at molecular level prior to the occurrence of chemical reactions. That is the very basic definitions when you talk about pre-mixed flames. And the mixing takes place at molecular levels uh, and, and this mixture is nothing but a homogeneous mixture. But in contrast, when if you look at diffusion flames, they are initially separated and the reaction occurs only at the interface between the fuel and oxidizers, where actual mixing is mixing and reaction takes place. An example of diffusion flame uh, is burning of a candle. Diesel engine combustion is mainly dominated by pre-mixed as well as diffusion burning. So, we cannot exactly say it is a diffusion flame, it is a uh, combination of both, but however, SI engine it is purely dominated by pre-mixed flame. But uh, by definition, if you go back to combustion terminology, the way we defined the pre-mixed flame that mixing takes place at molecular level and mixer is homogeneous. In the similar context, we say that diffusion to the molecular level is achieved when the fuel molecules diffuse towards the flame in one direction while oxidizer molecules diffuse to the flame in the opposite directions. So, basically we have uh, fuel and air molecules and they come as a separate entity and they when uh, entity and uh, when the reaction takes place at the location of at the flame locations, the uh, we as say that fuel molecules diffuse towards the flame in one direction and oxygen molecules diffuse to the flame in the opposite directions. This is the very basic definition for diffusion flame. And moving further, uh, there is another concept of turbulent flames, and in turbulent uh, non pre mixed flame, the and turbulent convection mixes the fuel and air together at microscopic basis and in a molecular level and or in the small molecular scales, the mixing uh, process occurs uh, in, the, uh, in a very small uh, domain or thickness and that where the chemical reaction takes place. In fact, in most of the engine combustions, turbulence was created intentionally so that we need to have a proper mixing of fuel and air and in particular that is in diesel engines. So, having said the very basic introductory part of the flame, we will now focus on to laminar flame. So, before you go for the laminar flame, let us understand how this laminar flame look like or what is the basic definition of the flame. Uh, so, a flame is nothing but a self sustaining propagation of localized combustion zone at subsonic speed. So, there are keywords like localized and subsonic. 
So of course, why the word subsonic? Because at advanced version of combustion, we can have a supersonic uh, mode of combustion where air and fuel movement uh, is, is treated as a uh, at supersonic speeds. But however, that is not part of the course. But to understand a uh, particular features of laminar flame, let us see that why this flame has to be localized because it occupies small portion of combustible mixture at any time instant. If a flame exists, then it must contain the combustible mixture of fuel and air at any time instance. Uh, now, there are two categories that we can have deflagration or detonations. So, here deflagration occurs when discrete combustion waves they travel at subsonic speed. Uh, but when these waves uh, are travel at supersonic velocities, we call this as a detonations. Uh, so, our main focus will be the combustion phenomena at subsonic speeds and we are trying to look into the characteristics features of this premixed flame. So, the dominant uh, uh, factors that is influenced for the existence of a laminar flame are its flame speed and flame thickness. Uh, and for this existence of this flame speed and flame thickness, we require appropriate environment. Means, uh, we uh, for this uh, for a self sustaining flame, we require adequate equivalence ratio, temperatures and pressure, fuel types all conditions needs to be satisfied. And in fact, the flame speed the effectively detects the flame shape stability such as blow up and flashback, blow up flashback something like either it can ex it can create an explosion or it can um, uh, the flame is will be out of the domain or flame, flame will not exist. And all the other parameters like we also require the flammability limits, ignitions, extinction that means, uh, uh, to um, uh, for a self sustaining flame we need to uh, put appropriate amount of energy we call this as a ignition energy. And the flame for to uh, terminate or flame to be um, terminated we, re we require flame extinction. So, all these things we are going to discuss for a uh, laminar flame. Uh, so, before you do that, so let us understand the characteristics features of a flame and that is decided with respect through its temperature profile. We will talk come back to the temperature uh, profile later, but let us understand that if wa you want to have a existence of flame, what should happen? The flame may be freely propagating when it is initiated in a tube in a combustible mixture. The appropriate coordinate system must be considered. So, basically, if you consider a flame to exist, normally the by definition we say in a one dimensional framework, if the flame has to exist, it has a very small thickness, and within this thickness, we have reactants, products and actual reaction that takes place. So, if you see that if there is a some flame, it is traveling at certain speed. So, let us say if it is flame speed is SL and it is traveling at certain speed, then what we see is if you say this is a flame and when you are uh, when you take the coordinate systems such that you are sitting on the flame and try to see uh, in a one dimensional framework, you try to see where is reactants and where is products. So, uh, so if you take this domain, you can see uh, just before this flame, we will see that we will have burnt gases, which means flame has already propagated in this region and in the other side we have unburnt gases which means it is a mixture of reactants or reactants 
which that is fuel plus oxidizer means that this flame has not entered to the unburnt regions and when the flame crosses this burnt regions already the burnt gases has very high velocities. So, that this we see when we are sitting on the flame. Now, with respect to laboratory viewpoint, you assume that you arrest this flame that means flame is same flame you arrest it and try to see where is the unburnt gases and where is the burnt gases. Uh, so, in, in a sense that if you if the flame is considered to be stationary right now, we can say that this unburnt products or unburnt gases they enter at similar sp speed at certain speed and they come as burnt gases. and entire event that happens in this small thickness which is nothing but the flame thickness. So, this viewpoint we call this as laboratory viewpoint analysis and this is with respect to flame viewpoint. So, this is what we have explained here that observer riding on this combustion flame experiences unburnt gases approaching at certain speed and the flame is stationary relative to the laboratory frame for which reactants enter the flame uh, with a flame's uh, propagation velocity of S L. And in one dimensional uh, and in a certain flame sheet, flame sheet of certain thickness 1 mm let us say, uh, we can see a one dimensional zone in which we can apply this continuity equations for a frontal area A that involves density as well as the speed. Now, the flame heats the products uh, and when we apply we can write these continuity equations with respect to this equations we says rho u S L into A uh, that is flame speed is equal to rho u V u into A that is equal to rho b into v b into a. So, a is your frontal area which get, will get cancelled, but what remains is that rho is the density u stands for burnt gases b stands subscripts u and b stands for burnt and unburnt gases. And we have uh, flame speed s l uh, velocity uh, v stands for velocity. So, this equation says that v b has to be greater than v u. Why? because uh, we can say that since the flame heats the products, the product density is less than uh, reactants and gas velocity is higher than the uh, burnt gas velocity is higher than the velocity of the unburnt gases. So, because of this reasons since V B greater than V U, so this equation needs to be satisfied. So, that means rho U must be greater than rho B and uh, uh, much much higher typically in a hydrocarbon air flame this is about 7 times higher. So, uh, this particular equation gives considerable acceleration of gas within the flame and all this analysis are done with respect to one dimensional framework. Now, now let us understand another clear pictures. So, this is a generic figure that represents what happens in the flame. Uh, so, a flame is considered to have two distinct zones, one is preheat zone, other is reaction zone. So, the preheat zone is where the little heat is released and reaction is the zone is where the where the bulk amount of chemical energy is released. So, if you look at this particular figure, we are looking at this um, axial distance versus heat release or temperature or mole fractions. So, as you go uh, in this axillary directions obviously, the concentration or mole fraction for the reactants drops and when the reaction keeps on happening temperature shoots up and if you look at the temperature shoots very fast rate and temperature also shoots up and um, at the same time 
there is an n of heat re release so we call this as a volumetric heat release and this heat release is very instantaneous and it to uh, it takes a shape of a impulsive nature so it's like an impulsive heat load uh, so uh, what we see here is that if you divide this entire phenomena in two zones one is preheat zone other is reaction zone so during the preheat zone not much of information we get about heat release or temperatures but maximum mm, uh, reactions or changes that takes place in the reaction zone and typically entire event that happens in a flame thickness which is nearly about 1 mm and further and if you very particular about reaction zone it is further divided into uh, further thin regions which involves fast reactions at or fast chemistry as well as the slow chemistry for example the destruction of fuel molecules and creation of uh, uh, intermediate species occur in the fast region chemistries and in fact they are dominated in a bimolecular reactions now again in the uh, fast reaction zones uh, where temperature and species concentrations are very large so in the reaction zones the temperature and species concentration are very large and this uh, and it has to be and uh, to keep this flame uh, in a self sustaining mode this uh, 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 temperature and species concentration should be high and because they provide necessary driving force uh, hence we can say diffusion of heat and radical spe species from reaction zone to preheat zone uh, can produce a self sustaining uh, flame and another kind of uh, um, reactions also gets dominated when you take uh, and even that is in the secondary zone or reaction zone in which the reaction is dominated by three body radical recombinations what we discussed earlier they are bimolecular uh, reactions now there are um, other possibilities that there are radical combinations of in the secondary reaction zone where we can have the three body radical recombinations so when you say recombination when when the word recombination takes place it normally slows down the reaction process so as a result the formation of uh, products gets m the dominance one such example i can say that when co and oh radicals they mix in the reaction zone they form co2 once co2 is formed it automatically slows down because again further dissociation is not initiated uh, so uh, the uh, three body radical zones is normally considered as a recombination reactions it slows down the uh, bimolecular reactions another kind of study people have done is that for hydrocarbon flames uh, uh, the one when you look at hydrocarbon flames Uh, and we try to see what happens in this reaction zone we find that uh, during uh, fuel reach uh, sorry during excess air um, reactions or in a lean mixtures we see the flame to appear as a blue and and that is due to the presence of radix radical ch and that is uh, that happens in a high temperature zone now uh, when we come back or we reduce the excess air that means we come back to stoichiometric or we are entering into the fuel rich region this uh, zone becomes uh, or the color becomes blue green so this is mainly due to the carbon atoms or c2 and in both the cases uh, we get an effect ca called as chemi luminescence which means co reacts with oxygen to give co2 plus h nu h nu is the uh, planck's constant and nu is the um, radiation uh, frequency of radiations uh, so this uh, frequency talks about which color uh, gets dominated during the reaction process now further when you enter into uh, richer zone that means when the flame gets more and more richer 
it is obvious that we will have suit formations. Okay. And this suit formation uh, that we have already analyzed that when we are rich mixtures, suit formation, formation is a very common effect. And all these things again when we analyze the suit formations, we analyze the, the viewpoint of uh, chemical reactions. Here we are going to look into the viewpoint of flame. Okay. Now, let us understand the some mathematical background how a flame is looks like. Uh, a standard example uh, which can say is a Bunsen burner flame which consists of a dual flame. So, if you look at a Bunsen burner flame, uh, the entire idea is that we have slots, uh, we have a tube and in the tube, uh, in the bottom of the tube there are slots where air enters and also there is a passage of fuel and both mix uh, and travel towards the upper regions. And what we see in the top is uh, uh, flame consists of, of two cones, one is inner cone, other is outer cone. So, inner cone is typically premixed, whereas outer cone is diffusion. So, what does this mean? That uh, the fuel premixed inner flame is surrounded by a diffusion flame. The secondary diffusion flame is formed because in this uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen products from richer in, in, um, um, cone encounters the ambient air. So, the shape of uh, uh, the flame is further uh, determined by the combined effect of velocity, profile and heat loss to the tube wall. Now, for the flame to remain stationary, the flame speed must be equal to the speed of normal component of unburned gases at each location which can be illustrated in the following vector diagrams. So, let us talk of uh, see this particular figure, we have this inner cone and in this inner cone geometrically we can say uh, we can define an angle alpha which is the local angle of a fl the, the flame sheet that makes with a vertical flame. We have the unburned gas velocity which is defined by V u vector which comes from the bottom. Then we can define two components, one is the normal component, other is the tangential component with respect to this flame sheet Z uh, and based on this uh, we can define laminar velocity S L is equal to V u times sin alpha. So, this is the basic definition of laminar burning velocity. Now, moving further there are the consideration of the flames is normally adopted in various types of burners and uh, in the market available we have radiant burners, we have adiabatic burners and what they produce? They produce laminar uh, flames and in the adiabatic form burners uh, we get stable flat flames and in non adiabatic burners we get uh, we get stable flame but very, but very very narrow regions and in non adiabatic uh, flame we get same flame but we want we got it get it in a uh, over a wide range of flow conditions so typically depending on the requirement of uh, the burners we decide what what should be the nature of uh, um, the flame and all all of the things is decided the whether we are retaining this flame speed or not or flames or self sustaining flame or not the next topic of discussion is factors that influences the flame velocity so the first two factors are obviously temperature and pressures uh, uh, laminar flame speed has a, a strong temperature dependence because the global reaction orders for the hydrocarbons is about 2. So, it is a uh, kind of second order reactions and for which the activation energy is quite high, it is about 1.7 into 10 to the power joule per kilo mole. The increase of temperature of burnt gases also increases the temperature of unburnt gases by the same amount. 
when dissociation and temperature dependent specifics are neglected. So, this is the role of temperatures and when you think about what is the temperature dependence, uh, there are um, the with respect to flame speed, the uh, laminar speed is with respect to temperatures is given by this expression which says that uh, burning speed is, uh, a, is proportional to the square root of temperature of unburnt gases. So, and these relations are empirical in nature and it is very of course, and this holds good for uh, most of the temperature ranges from 300 to maybe close to 1000 Kelvin. Another dependence of pressure we can say that pressure lam laminar speed uh, is proportional to or inverse related to pressures uh, and also the flame thickness is related to thermal diffusivity and uh, the flame speed. So, basically if you look at a flame it has certain thickness delta, it has a characteristic speed S L. So, S L is depends on temperature of unburnt gases and pressure and delta is depends on flame speed and thermal diffusivity. So, and this simple relations are given through empirical correlations as shown in this equations. The next dependence factor that influences the flame velocity are equivalence ratio and fuel type. So, if you recall our earlier one of the figure which says that how the temperature changes uh, during a reaction process with respect to equivalence ratio. If you talk about adiabatic flame temperatures, we have seen that for a methane air uh, a propane air mixture the uh, maximum adiabatic temperature is reached about 2 to 7 8 Kelvin at slightly rich uh, mixture that is closely phi is equal to 1.05. So, in same philosophy we can say equivalence as equivalence ratio as major role as that of temperatures. So, the flame speed is expected to be maximum at slight reach equivalence ratio because the adiabatic flame is uh, approaches peak value and it falls on either side. Okay. And this logic also is true for with respect to equivalence ratio. Another uh, type of comparison with respect to fuel type, one can say uh, we can make some distinction that hydrogen is considered to be one of the green fuel and whereas, hydrocarbon fuels are also considered as the uh, which are being used in the conventional as a conventional fuel. And in if you look at hydrogen in a hydrogen conversion environment, hydrogen flame speed is higher than that of a propane or any hydrocarbon that is mainly because thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity of hydrogen is much more higher than the hydrocarbon fuels that is one thing. Second is reaction kinetics for hydrogen is very rapid because the relative slower reactions that is conversion of CO to CO, CO to CO2 is absent that carbon that means one of the reaction process that is a step where carbon monoxide changes to carbon dioxide and this is nothing but a slow reactions and these slow reactions uh, of course, affects the uh, rate kinetics or, ki or um, kinetics and chemical kinetics and which, which is absent in hydrogen because hydrogen is a green fuel and uh, for which you can say the reaction kinetics of H2, H2 is much higher. A workable model for flame speed correlations has been developed for laminar speeds. So, here we are going to discuss the laminar speed correlations with respect to pressure, temperatures and some dilute, dilutants. One thing I need to emphasize the uh, while developing this correlations, this correlations is with respect to particular fuel with certain reference conditions and the um, 
and the expressions deal with some pressure and temperature exponents and all these data sheets or data for the fuel types that can be available in the textbooks. What it says is that uh, it has uh, the if you look at this particular expressions the calculation of laminar sp flame speed depends on three factors that is flame speed at reference conditions, uh, the effect of temperatures of unburnt gases, effect of pressures and then the effect of dilutants. That means, in many engine, IC engines what you do we circulate the exhaust gas again into the engines. So, it affects the, um, the engine equivalence ratio. In turn, it has a negative effect with respect to flame speed. That means, flame speed reduces with the presence of dilutants. So, this means that the recirculation of exhaust or flue gases mix with the incoming charge, uh, charge in most of the operating conditions, this reduces the flame speed. So, as you can see in this figure. And in fact, in this particular relation holds good for temperature much much above than 350 Kelvin. And if you use this formula for less than 350 Kelvin, we get a uh, underestimate value of the respect to flame speed. Uh, uh, and for our study, uh, uh, we can say this laminar speed correlations is a very strong relations that can solve many numeric that can which can be used for solving many numerical problems for the combustion st studies. Of course, this particular uh, relations um, has dominant influence. Uh, we can say with respect to temperature as well as pressures and in particular while dealing with the turbulent flame analysis, uh, the estimate of a laminar flame speed plays a key role. So, this uh, things is very vital in, in the study. So, okay, with this we completed uh, this uh, today's uh, lecture parts. The second component uh, we are going to discuss is the uh, to solve some numerical problems based on our discussion. So, the first problem talks about uh, a situation uh, where we are considering a premixed laminar flame in a one dimensional gas flow, where the vertical velocity of unburnt gases varies, varies linearly with horizontal uh, distance as shown in this figure. So, we are supposed to find what is the flame speed, flame shape, distribution of local angle and uh, uh, flame surface from the vertical for a stoichiometric methane air flame speed of 0.4 meter per second. So, basically the problem is nothing but we need to recall our study uh, where uh, we say that if you say we have a flame print which is plotted in a z x coordinates and if you take a flame sheet which is propagating and we can draw one vertical which is nothing but your flame speed s l and unburnt gases which can go as B u and if you take the angle point of reference then you can say this angle is nothing but your alpha and this angle is nothing but beta. Okay. And what one particular point and one particular point on this uh, flame sheet we draw a tangent and configure this geometrical informations. And what the question is asked we need to find what is this shape flame shape first thing and distribution of local angle. Local angle means what is the how alpha varies with the distance. What is the data given? Data given is referred with respect to figure. 
your vertical uh, unburned velocity that varies in a distance 0 to 20 millimeter and speed varies from 0.8 to 1.2 meter per seconds. So, and this variation is linear. So, this linear relation is given. So, uh, we recall that laminar flame speed SL is equal to V u sin alpha. So, that we can write alpha is equal to sin inverse uh, S L by V u right and S L is given as 0.4 meter per second we will write 400 millimeter per second. And what data from this figure we can get at x is equal to 0 we say V u is equal to um, 800 meter mm per second x is equal to 20 mm V u is equal to 1 to 0 0 mm per second. So, this equation can give you the relation between V u and x. So, you can write this linear equations as uh, 800 plus the slope, slope is nothing but uh, 1200 minus this minus this minus 800 divided by uh, thick distance that is 20 into x. So, you can write V u is equal to 800 plus 20 x. So, the distribution of local angle that alpha can be written as, so alpha you can write as sin inverse S L, S L is 400 divided by V u, V u is 800 plus 20 x. So, we get alpha as a function of uh, x that is the second part of the study. Other the to find the flame speed we need to find the uh, z versus x. So, from this figure we can find what is dz by dx. So, dz by dx we can write as tan beta. So, by this trigonometric analysis we can say V u which is a function of x square minus S L square. So, this distance this by this. So, this is your angle divided by S L square. Then uh, we know V u is 800 plus uh, 20 x and S L is 400 millimeter per second. So, we can write this equation as d z by d x as 800 plus 20 x whole square minus uh, S L square 400 square divided by 400 square. So, after simplifications this becomes 2 plus 0 0.05 x square minus 1. So, z of x is nothing but integration of d z by d x from 0 to x. So, we know dz d z by d x we, we can find the into d x. So, these equations can be integrated to get the uh, flame shape. So, this is a very simple problem uh, which we can be attempted and this, this figure that takes about that how z varies with x typically we are going to get it and how, how alpha varies with x that also you can see it is plotted here. So, ultimately what those plots we come here that is represented through this equation. The second problem which we are going to discuss is about uh, the 
comparison of laminar speeds of gasoline air mixer in a spark ignition engines at equivalence ratio 0.82 in three cases. One is temperature pressure conditions at reference situations, engine operating conditions and engine op operating conditions with an EGR. So, for that the first equation that we are going to recall that what is uh, okay, the first case let us see. So, what is the data given? Datas are T reference. Normally, this T reference is 298 Kelvin, which is already written in your in our previous slides. P reference is 1 atmosphere that is your reference conditions and fuel parameters at reference conditions are required as B m is equal to 27.58 meter per second. B 2 is minus 780, 70.84 meter per second. Phi m is equal to 1.13. So, this data we obtained from the book and that is turns book and this data was taken for gasoline air mixer. Okay. So, this is the data given now you have to recall what is the expression for SL. SL at reference condition is given by B m plus B 2 into phi minus phi m whole square. So, your data that is given phi as 0 0.82 and we all know that we have all this value B m, B 2 and B m, uh, phi m. So, inserting the value we can directly get SL as 20, 20 centimeter per second. Okay. B 2 is given, B m is given, phi is 0 0.82, phi m is 1.13. So, we get SL reference. The second part is we have to find with, re, with this SL reference data, we are going to going to get the engine operate engine at we have to we are going to get the flame speed at engine operating conditions. So, we have to recall. So, there we have to give the dependence of pressure and temperatures. So, that expression SL at temperature T u and pressure P we can write SL reference T u divided by T reference to the power gamma into P by P reference. So, what is data given? P is 18 atmosphere, T u is 680 Kelvin. What we uh, P to the power gamma into beta? So, exponent gamma is 2.18 minus 0 0.8 into phi minus 1. So, phi is 0 0.82. So, this gives gamma value as 2.234 and beta is equal to minus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.22. These correlations you have to use phi minus 1 minus 0 0.86 plus 0 0.22 into phi minus 1 that gives beta value is minus 0 0.1996. So, by inserting this value with this will give you beta gamma beta uh, okay, p p reference t reference all are known. So, this will give you uh, or I can say S L at 680 Kelvin 18 atmosphere we will get this is 71 centimeter per second. 
so you can see that a cell at 680 Kelvin 18 atmosphere is greater than a cell reference this is the first conclusion we say second part or last part this same operating conditions but with exhaust gas recirculations so in the same expression when you say EGR is 18 percent or we can say it is 0 0.18 we write SL at TU P and EGR is equal to SL that is 680 18 atmosphere 680 Kelvin 18 atmosphere this value multiplied by 1 minus 2.1 y dilutant. So, here the y or mole uh, or we can say uh, mass fraction of dilutant is 0.18. So, y dilutant is 0 0.18. So, this number when you calculate that uh, SL TU P EGR that value is 44.2 meter per centimeter per second. So, this means your and that is less than SL at 680 K and 18 atmosphere. What it says that exhaust gas recirculations decreases the flame speed and higher circulation of EGR will have a great uh, consequence in terms of uh, flame speed because it can arrest the flame to very almost zero velocity. So, there are limited little situations that exhaust gas can be initiated with certain level. So, with this I conclude the discussions for today. Thank you for your attention.